Ladies and gents, this is WNHL 95 Weekly with Ultra Magnus, your host, your commissioner, and your idiot who trades first round picks, who gets to the finals in the shitty bill and can't accomplish anything. Well, this week, we're going to do something a little different. I'm not going through the Google Sheets. I'm not going to go through anything like that. I'm going to go through right to the what if. As you can see in the background of this, and with my dog rolling on the ground, not knowing what the hell she's doing. But it's okay, we'll figure it out. We'll get King Rath, we'll get Zagatan, we'll get Gaelic Gopher, the Clintons, all those fucking guys, we'll get them in the nut. Shut up! And we'll go and do some fun things. So, I have probably five or six what-ifs. And it's going to be a short video, that's all we're going to leave it as. So we're going to jump into it really, really quickly. Uh, you can all have your own ideas of what it actually is. But let's start it off. What if Sean Bell was never in the league? So if Sean Bell was never in the league, who would be the actual dynasty going on right now? He's a five-time champ. Um, he knocked out King Raph. He knocked out Tickness. He knocked out Puss. He knocked out Nips. He's knocked out his fair share of players in the finals. And Colin three times. So it kind of makes you wonder. If Sean Bell has never joined the league, who would be the, the the unanimous champion? Given from what we've seen over the last six seasons and a half, and the Q League and then the Vintage League, I honestly would say that Ticklepuss would probably have two or three championships. Segathon would probably have one or two. Um, LHX probably would have one or two. Uh, it, it'd be a variety of people, I think, but it would be a far more balanced or unpredictable kind of finals. Nobody would really know who would get there. Um, it would be a toss-up every season. Um, when you have Sean or Colin in a conference, you pretty much can guarantee that one of them will push it. And unless you're Nips and had an opportunity to knock that guy out or Tickiness, those would be the only two people that really push Sean to the level or put him on the brink. Same thing with Segathon in Season 2. Um, or season three, I can't remember exactly which one, but it, regardless of what the fuck would happen, Bell is the the goat. There's nobody else involved in there. It's He's basically the Tom Brady of our league. Uh, WNHL 95 is Tom Brady. When you look back at the, the seasons that we will play in the future and ran past seasons, Bell is the goat. Uh, we have some other goat leans, but nobody is in that same group. The next one, what if WNHL 95 was auto goalie? I know it's been a hot topic for high guys saying like from the high tournament, which was a great experience. I wasn't being able to go onto their, their podcast and discuss it. It was a great experience, completely different from Segathon in the many of ways. But I do think from the overall approach, the auto goalies, they are a hundred percent right. You got to play defense. There's no sugarcoating it or like sitting back and being like fucking Lloyd sitting there in the net, Dan. I know you fucking referee and sit there fucking refereeing and calling penalties on kids. But in the auto goalie thing, you got to move. You got to play defense. You got to check. You got to you gotta attack. There's no sitting back and waiting. You can do the sitting back and waiting, but you're going to get abused on one-timers. And I experienced that. Uh, me and Nips had ourselves quite a battle in the, sh like the shitty bill of high. And uh, it was quite a battle. In 10-minute periods, it's quite fun. Um, if we could maybe create a league that had 10 minute periods, but you only had a 20, 20 game season with auto goalie, I think a high tournament league would actually be quite a fun thing to do similar to what we're doing now. I think maybe we should actually incorporate that. And then maybe another one with line changes, because I know there's a few people in the league would be like, Hey, it'd be really cool to try line changes. We well, can pre pretty much figure that out. Uh, any options on the table. The other one would be who would be the top five teams in the league, if we did a full re-league reshuffle, like a fantasy draft, start from scratch, who would be the top five rosters? I think based on drafting, Sutton would definitely be up there. Uh, Wolfie, the little doggy. Sam, my dog is talking. Um, the Wolf would be up there because he could draft some good team. Uh, probably Klein, myself, Sam. And uh, probably... God damn it! Sammy, stop. My dog is trying to like get me to, my attention to doing something. Sammy, calm down. Daddy finish. Then we go. Sit. Go settle. So, given that, then the, the, who else would have redone some teams? Um, Gretzky probably wouldn't be with Sammy Smith. Wouldn't be with Sammy Smith. 
Um, we wouldn't really know. I, the, those are based on the most active coaches. But I honestly think that I don't think LHX would go with Ed Belfort number one overall. I think that maybe... Um, then I think it would probably be... Segathon would probably still draft shitty goaltendings. Puss would probably go for the heaviest, fattest people in the league. Sumter would probably do the same thing with Pinky Elephants. Um, they, they, they probably, they, I don't think there's many teams that would probably do much things different. I think the teams that came in later in the, in the, the future seasons, like season two to five, and even season six, those ones would probably have drafted different teams. Uh, Mike Vick probably would have that drafted a much better team than he did. I would have never drafted Hasek because <laughs> we could see Autobahn's trying to dump him as hot as a fucking hot mess. Um, I wouldn't matter who I would have had. As long as I had Solani, I don't think anybody else on my roster would have been safe regardless of who I drafted. Um, yeah, but I think Gaylor Gopher would have probably traded everybody for Minnesota University players. Um, I don't know who else. G-Lock probably would have went for anybody who flew, flew a jet or flew a plane or it made a paper airplane. I don't know. We really don't know. Um, the next one. What if Gaelic Gopher played every single game on Pino and Gummies? I do know that he has, um, he has a, a batch or at least he's got some kind of combination between his Pino and his Gummies that makes him almost, been, almost impossible to beat. And I don't know if he goes into some kind of like chemical imbalance mentally and just forgets everything and then plays out of his mind. I really don't know. I would have to do some testing and figure that out. But yeah, he his game style has a very unique way with it. Is and maybe him being on Pino and Gummies makes him kind of think about not using his goalie and pressing B to pass it to the other team and score quickly. He might blank out about that and not do it at all. Maybe he's like a savant when it comes to having the the chemical imbalance from Pino and Gummies. Who knows? Um, another what if. What if we gave Derek Sutton full access to all the data and let him be the GM for a season? Curious just to see where his mindset would be. He just recently put in a WN FIFA type cup style tournament. Whatever. I don't like soccer that much to fucking create a hockey league based on it. If there was a hockey league based on soccer, it's obviously that you like the format of soccer, just don't like watching it and you want to try to apply it to hockey. I personally like the hockey styles. We just got to manipulate some of the other ones or create different leagues. It, it, that's what it comes down to, nuts and bolts. As long as there's no game limit, I think that people like Lloyd Einstein, he's no longer in the shit list regardless of how many games he plays or doesn't. Lloyd is the new shit storm of our league. He is now the bottom dumpster bitch. Um, stop refing and play your fucking games. We're going into the, the spring months. You shouldn't have any more hockey to fucking play. Um, there was a funny one I saw Gaelic say, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, what if Americans didn't have internet? You pretty much would be a third world country. You don't, without the internet, I think you guys would be completely useless. No pun intended. Uh, just because you guys think Canadians are horrible. If we, ha if we actually had proper internet, we'd actually be on balance. But the thing is, is when we have our internet plans and cell phones being like $150 Canadian, which is probably about like three cents American, for a phone plan, just a phone plan, where yours is like $46 all in, which comes out to about $70 Canadian. Regardless, if Americans didn't have internet, it would basically be the Waterloo tournament against outsiders from anywhere in Canada. So, if you're not in Canada, then it would basically be a battle of the gold. Who knows? I don't really give a fuck. It's just an idea. Um, the other thing I was wondering is if we had every single team that never disbanded in the league, how big would our league actually be? This is including any coach who disbanded from any season. My memory might serve me correct, or it might make me have to rethink everything, but if just off the top of my head, King Rath, Colin, Tickness, Halifax, Coach Mike Gamby, Kent Standia, uh, Comical, Mattie, Hines, Aftershock, uh, Leviathan, Sammy Smith, Bomb Jack, and I know an Echiel. So that's 15. Added to our 32 would be, be a 47 team league. 40 fucking seven teams. That'd be an crazy amount of fucking coaches to have. A, like basically, uh, 
three on three hockey because there wouldn't be enough players in the league to be able to accommodate every roster. But given what it would have been was like, what if Keenan Raff stayed around? I think as long as there was no none of that fucking pinning the goalie and uh, doing the, the but what is it? I'm gonna call it the pussy dump, is which is tickle puss's little move. Um, instead of the Canadian dumb, I call it a pussy move because if you're doing it, like it's kind of pussy, but you know what? Some goalies are dumb enough to fall for it. And there's a lot of coaches that do fall it, me included. Um, Colin just had a style that I never was able to break. Some people did. Sean's got a fucking book on him and knows how to play him because he's played him so much. Tickness had, uh, Passy McGee. That's like pass the puck. Tickness was the guy you would want to follow or uh, envy his game style. We know that Wolf said, I envy his play style. That's what I would like to do. And now he's resorted to down B as a part of his toolbox. And the fact that Sean Bell is including in his toolbox a down B. Sean, you don't have to use a down B. You're already better than 90% of the fucking league. There's no reason for you to resort to shittiness. Or the the high guys like to call it the snapperoo. Well, snap your pussy back into place and play some real hockey. Work your fucking puck instead of trying to throw it down the ice. Sagathon's the only one that's allowed to do it because he's done it from the beginning. Uh, Coach Mike, he had an interesting style, kind of like Mike Vicks. Those two would have had a really interesting part if they were in the same division because they're both Italian. What would it be? I don't know. Would it have been Rome against, uh, fuck, I don't know, like Sagatini or or Pasta Bagione? I don't know. I don't know any of the cities in, in Italy other than Rome. Um... Then there's Halifax, the interesting style, Mr. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? It was Steve Duchesne instead of Steve, Steve Duchesne. And um, the comical, but she took a step aside, which is understandable. A lot of shit goes along when you're in university and college. You got, you got to buckle down and do some schooling. Uh, Gamby, Mr. Mr. Consistently like trying to get better, and he keeps getting, he was keep getting better, and then he folded tents. I think it came down to that if it was Super Nintendo, it would have been a bit of a different story. Can't stand you, Mr. Tatiyaka Tuck Thunder. He would have been, he was starting to get there. He just needed to play more consistently, play more games more consistently, not leaving such big gaps between his games. Um, Mattie, we still miss him. I really do hope that he does come back to some degree because it would really be a fun thing. He was one of the best dark side interviews I ever did. Um, Heinz, I don't know if he's in some dumpster or some fucking, uh, I don't know, some fucking ditch somewhere with his red truck cuddled up next to his fucking money. He owes the 94 guys and his stupid sub company that he apparently owned and that his sister was taking all his phone calls that he died right in front of a funeral. Fuck me. Fuck you, Heinz, you stupid douchebag. Uh, Leviathan, Mr. I want to play. I'm so excited. Thanks for reaching out. I can't play. And I forgot another one, at one sir. Other than his one game, it's similar to like a lot of NHL players. Man, you play one game, you're out for the league, and you're ne- you never join the big leagues ever again. Um, but Leviathan, hot Jets, it was a hot mess. He would never fucking play more than 20 games in a season. Two times. Two times. And he ain't coming back, bud. Uh, Sammy Smith, probably the best Twitch pre- presenter of all time, Having uh, doing homework with his kids while playing putting his Jason mask on, and uh, Pierre Terja, Jeremy Spoken, yeah. Ah, we miss you, Sammy. Come back, buddy, whenever you can. You got a fucking free carte blanche. And then Bomb Jack, Bomb Jack was a good guy, but didn't, he only suck around for one season. And then Aftershock, our, our tech guru of all time, it would be nice to have him back at some point. And my last what if, what if, WNHL 95 did not exist. What would we all be doing right now? I'd probably be still just modding and getting bored out of my fucking mind and actually working. (laughs) Um, But other than that, I think we've created something here. Thanks to all of you of being able to create a league that we're a bunch of fucking dorks and geeks, the fucking crazy assholes, the drunken morons, and high as a kite fucking bunch of fiends on the fucking electric lettuce. But given with all that, you guys have made this league what it is. Not only the WNHL 95 league, we also got the Q. We got the Vintage, the Dark Side Sim League. We got 
uh, the original OG 95 league. We got tournaments. We fucking, we got cameos from fucking Kirk McLean and Timu Solani. Um, we've gotten stuff in this league that I don't think many leagues could fucking tip their hat onto. And it's almost like a privilege to be in this league. The more that you think about it, yes, 94 is a bigger community, but being a 95 community player, you are a part of an elite group of people that don't get to experience the fun that we have in 95. Yes, we have a, a game that's on the fucking steroids all the time. We're going to have times where the leagues are the games are going to be slower. If you play if you ever join the vintage league, it's like playing 94 but with 95 graphics. That's the feel of the game. But we're in a community where we've grown together. We've been together for almost 2 years in August. Um, the the original teams were all still here. There's some guys who have gone, some guys who have come back. It's it's the, the great thing about this league is that it's always evolving, it's always growing, and it's always getting better. Uh, styles will change. One-timers were the big thing in Season 1. One-timers are coming back. Breakaways were a big thing in Season 2 and 3, and they're coming back to the, all thanks to fucking Sean. Uh, manual goalies are becoming bigger. And the biggest thing in this, the much, as much as that you put into it is the much you'll get out of it. So as much as what we put in, as much as we'll get out. We promote the league. We'll do what we can. But WNHL 95 is here to stay. I got 140 seasons of data that we can play with and we can create any league we want. I do think a 10-minute period, auto goalie, no penalties, and we do a 20-game season, I think that would be a fun touch. But other than that, that's going to be our weekly video for what ifs uh, or what if. And next week, we might go into something else. I really don't know. Maybe we'll do an all-time power ranking of teams from each season across all the seasons. Which team showed up the best? T Thunder Bay Pike will likely be in the top 10 a few times. But there is some of his teams that didn't deserve to be up there. The year that uh, Tickness almost beat them. I don't think Sean was the best team that year. Colin was. He had the fucking Milwaukee half puck. But regardless. Ideas come to the through. Come up with some ideas that I think maybe I could present in our next video, and we can go from there. Play your fucking games. Mid-season trade deadline is only about nine days or ten days away, and we got a, like another month and a half until the end of the season. So guys who only got a couple games played, play your fucking games. Guys who are ending towards their end of their season, hold off maybe a little bit longer until the trade deadline's done, and then we can move into the fucking full gear of the end of the season. But otherwise, stay groovy. Get to your fucking chopper and stop being a little bitch. And at the end of the day, I'll get you gadgets. Play your games. I'm your host, Ultra Magnus. Have a great week, guys. Bye.